Hello my YouTube workout buddies and welcome to this week's workout which is not going to be like my typical workouts. We're going to be doing a recovery slash mobility focused routine today and this re was requested by three of my patrons, John, Bonnie and Story. And John in particular, he's a runner and he wanted me to help him figure out some things to do for his hips, his hamstrings and his hip flexors and I've also thrown a few other core and postural corrective type of things in there as well and this uh, routine will really be beneficial for anybody who's a runner an endurance athlete uh, someone who does weightlifting someone who has a desk job pretty much if you have any postural things living in this modern world you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna have some things going on your in your body that um, these exercises will benefit you so for this workout you'll need a few things you'll need a chair you'll need um, this is optional um, just a mini band you don't necessarily need it but if you have one you can grab it and just a couple of weights I'm gonna be just using my 20 pound kettlebell I don't think I'm gonna need anything heavier than that and uh, yeah we're gonna be doing a series of warm-up exercises together and then we have a series of uh, mobility and strengthening exercises there's eight of them and we're gonna do two rounds of them and we're really gonna be focusing on mind muscle connection and going through things in the full range of motion uh, very slowly and consciously so it's going to be a bit different but I can guarantee you your body's going to feel sorry <laughs> really really good after you um, finish this routine all right so let's get started all right let's get things a little bit warm a little bit loose I'm gonna pretend I'm a yoga instructor now um, and we're gonna start with some slow and controlled sun salutations all right, so come to a standing position with your feet um, just about hip width apart. Screw your feet into the ground and squeeze your glutes and turn your core on, all right? From here, inhale, arms up. Now, from your upper back, from your thoracic spine, keep your glutes squeezed. Slight back bend coming from your thoracic or upper spine and not your low back. And exhale, fold forward. Inhale, come up halfway. Exhale, place your hands on the ground. And now step or jump back into a high plank. Stay here for a moment. Squeeze your core, squeeze your glutes. Push the floor away from you with your hands. Now, in a slow, controlled motion, Lower yourself down, making your elbows kind of just brush your side all the way to the ground. And now come up, baby cobra. Squeeze your glutes so that you're not engaging your low back because we just want to focus on your thoracic spine right now. So come up, baby cobra. Come back down. Push back up into a plank. Squeeze your core, squeeze your glutes. Press into downward dog. Hang out here for a second. Really push into the floor with your hands. Feel that nice stretch. Push your hips back. Push your chest towards the ground. Feel a nice stretch in your armpits, in your shoulders, and along the back of your legs. Now from here, come back and lift the right leg and bring it forward. We're going to come into a lunge. You can lift your arms. And you can sink a little deeper if you want. Squeeze your left glute and sink a little deeper. So you should feel a nice stretch along the front of your hip flexor here. Now come back down to a plank. We're going to switch sides, other leg comes forward. Come up, squeeze your core. If you're wobbling like I am, you gotta squeeze your core and your glutes more. Sink a little deeper. Feel that stretch. All right, hands on the ground. Again, chaturanga down. Come to the ground, baby cobra. And down. Press back into downward dog. 
Really push the floor away from you and try to reach your heart kind of like between your legs, if that makes sense. All right, now step or jump back. I don't really feel like jumping. And straighten your legs. And now one vertebrae at a time, starting with the base of your spine. Try to move one vertebrae at a time, coming up with your head last. Okay, we're gonna do that two more times. I'm just gonna speed up a tiny bit. So inhale, tiny little back bend here, not from your low back, but from your upper back. Bend over, halfway up, back down. Now step or jump, high plank. Squeeze your core, squeeze your glutes. Push the ground away from you, lower down. Now we're gonna come up a little bit higher if you want into cobra. Keep your glutes squeezed so that you're not um, tweaking your low back. Come back down. Press back up into plank. Push into a downward dog. Nice stretch along the back of the leg. Reach your chest. Reach your heart down and towards your legs. Alright, bring one leg forward. Arms up. Squeeze. Your glutes, squeeze. Yeah, squeezing your glutes really makes you more stable in this position. Come down a little lower, really squeeze. I feel that stretch here. Arms back down, bring that leg back. Bring the other leg forward. I know all the yogis doing this are like, this is not, this is not some salutation. Like, no, Christine. I don't do yoga, okay? Although I do some salutations sometimes just as like a little warm up, warm up or like a variation of something like that. Okay, arms down. Come back into the plank. Push the, push the floor away. Squeeze your glutes, squeeze your core. Make sure you're nice and stable. Now, lower yourself down slowly. And come up. And come back down vertebrae by vertebrae. Push back up into the plank. Downward dog again. Reaching your chest towards your thighs. I guess that, yeah, that's a better description. Back into a plank. Jump back up. All right, with your legs bent, now straighten your legs. And again, let's try to visualize each vertebrae moving separately, starting from the base of your spine and curling all the way up. All right, we're going to do it one more time. Inhale. Little back bend, squeeze your glutes. And come down. Halfway up. And all the way down, hands on the ground, step or jump back. High plank. All right, now lower down with control. Cobra. Back into high plank. Now, right leg comes forward. Squeeze. Feel that stretch in your hip flexor. Now I'll turn to the side for a moment. Arms up. Sink a little lower if you want. A little deeper here. All right, put your hands back down. Back into the plank. Switch sides. Come up. Squeeze, sink a little deeper. Really want to squeeze the glute on the side that you're stretching. So whatever leg is back, squeeze your glute there. You're gonna really feel a good stretch in the front of your leg and your hip flexor. Okay, back into a plank. 
push the floor away from you. Squeeze your glutes. And now, lower down very slowly. Cobra. And come back down slowly, vertebrae by vertebrae. Back into that plank. Downward dog. Just take a couple breaths here. Really squeeze. Flex your, flex your quads here. And push back. Push your hips back. All right, now step or hop. And straighten your legs. And now one vertebrae at a time. Try to come up really slow. Try to control every vertebrae. Which I, I can't. I, I actually don't have good spinal mobility. Not at all. That's why I'm working on this kind of stuff. Okay. All right. So hopefully you're feeling a little bit. My heart rate's up a little bit. A little warm, a little loose. So now we're going to stretch out our hip flexor even more because when you're a runner and when you sit a lot, this area gets super tight and I have really tight hip flexors. So what you're going to do, I'll show you this from the side. So you have a 90 degree angle here and here. So a lot of people, they do something like this. this that's not what we're doing right now. So we just want to stay at a 90 degree angle and tilt your hips under. So instead of like this, tilt, scoop it up, or not scoop it up, but don't be like this, but tilt your pelvis forward and squeeze your glutes. So right now we're gonna be stretching the left leg. So you're gonna stretch, or you're gonna squeeze the left glute, okay? We're gonna hold each side for 40 seconds. So here we go. And you can lift your arm if you want, and you can even just, you know, bend over to the opposite side just a little bit, and you're gonna feel an even deeper stretch there. But really just make sure you're squeezing your glute here. That's super, super important. Otherwise, you're not really gonna feel the stretch. This is like one of the stretches that most people do incorrectly, and I used to do it incorrectly as well. All right, we're going to switch sides now. So now the other leg is going to come forward. Am I at 90? Yeah, okay. All right, ready? Let's go. Again, lift that arm, tilt the pelvis under. Don't let your butt stick out. Tuck it under. Now squeeze the glute and reach over to the other side if you need a bigger stretch. Ten more seconds. You need 
need this exercise. One, I need this exercise. It's one of my new favorites. Two, three, really squeeze your glutes and push your hips up. Three, four, and five. And hold, push the hips up, squeeze, 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 and relax. Okay, now we're gonna do a little bit of a hamstring stretch. So you can lie down. Now, one leg down, bring the other leg up, put your arms, wrap your arms around the back of your thigh, and bring that leg back till you feel a stretch. Now we're gonna extend and contract. So every time you extend, you should be feeling a nice stretch in your hamstring. If you don't feel anything, bring that leg closer to you, okay? So I'm gonna do 10 on each side here. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, let's do the other leg. So again, bring that leg in until you feel a stretch, and then extend the leg and Bend the leg, bend, bend the knee. What? I don't even know what I'm saying. Okay, let's go. Ten reps. You know what I'm trying to say. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, and last one. Good. All right. So now we're going to do a little bit of the Edo Cortel squat routine that I usually just do in all of my videos. Okay, so um, get into a squat a wider than hip width. I mean, ideally you'd want to be just slightly wider than hip width, but uh, I don't I don't have the mobility to go quite that narrow yet. So you know, pick a stance that you can do and squat down, and go ahead and push your knees out with your elbows. And let's just hang out here for a moment. It feels so good. I love this position so much. Um, just make sure that your heels are on the ground. If you're in this position and you feel that you can't get your heels on the ground, then try widening your stance and holding on to something for support. So, all right, so let's start uh, doing some twists. So now we're going to take one arm and twist up for 10 reps. And you want to be twisting from your spine and not just cranking your shoulder, you know what I mean? So that's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, ten. All right, let's hold the last one up. Twist, twist, twist. And let's do the other side. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, 
eight, nine, and last one, 10. All right, <sighs> yeah. This position just feels so good. I, I spend pretty much every day at least a few minutes in this position and it's really helped my mobility, like so, so much so. If you don't do anything except for one thing, do this every day. Okay, so now we're gonna move on to the actual routine and I'll explain the purpose of each exercise while we do it just because, I don't know, probably wanna know why you're doing what we're doing, right? Okay, so first exercise we're going to do Cossack squats. So these are again excellent for hip mobility, ankle mobility, and just strengthening the things that we need to strengthen. Okay, so wide stance. Uh, come down to one side. And you want the, the foot that you're squatting down to flat on the floor and you can lift your arms in front of you for balance. Try to externally rotate both thighs and then you're going to switch over to the other side. You want to get as low as you can. And you may not be very low, you are, you might be lower than me. I'm not, like, like I said, I'm not very mobile, well, so you might be lower than me. So that was one rep, so we're going to go for 12. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Good. Next up, we're going to do clamshells. And this exercise is great for strengthening the glute mead, which is a little muscle on the side of your glute, which is responsible for keeping your legs um, out. So, you know when people do squats and you see their, their knees caving in? It's because we've got a weak glute mead. So, it's very important to strengthen this muscle for optimal gait and other squat mechanics. Okay, so 90 degrees here. 90 degrees here. Stack your legs on top of each other. And uh, if you're, you've never done this exercise before, I just recommend doing it without the band. It's just that I've been doing it for quite a while and I'm pretty used to it, so I'm gonna use a band. So we're just gonna open and close the legs, but without rotating through the hips. So you wanna place your hand on your butt and just be aware that you don't want to be opening this way, just the knee should be moving. So hopefully that makes sense. We're gonna go for uh, 20 reps per leg. So here we go. One, two. Nice and slow and controlled. Three, four, five, six, Seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight, nine, ten. Good. You should be getting a nice burn in the side of your butt with this one. Okay. Let's do the other side. One, two. Make sure that you're not rotating through the hip. Three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Great job. Okay. Now we're going to be moving to bird dog, which you guys know as well. Um, so you're just going to come to a tabletop position and you're going to brace your core and what you're going to do is just extend one arm and the opposite leg and this is, uh, the purpose of this is to really strengthen the core and the glutes. So it's one of my favorite all-time exercises. We're going to do 10 reps per side and we're going to go the same side for all 10 reps and then switch sides. So here we go. One. Make sure you're not twisting through your torso. Everything needs to stay stable except for that arm and that leg. That's the only thing that moves. Four. Five. Six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Other side. One, two, and make sure you're not overextending that leg like way up. I see a lot of people going up like that. Make sure that your leg stays in line with your butt. Four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. Next, we're going to go for some single leg box squats. So, this is basically, you know, just to really uh, make sure that we're even on both sides. These single leg box squats are a great exercise. Now that we've activated our glutes, we've activated our glute meat, this should really help us um, cement in this like strength and movement pattern. Sorry, I'm just not really that great at explaining things, but I hope it's making sense. Okay, so brace your core, and you can put your arms out in front of you, keeping your hips stable, you're gonna, that was, that was not good, hang on, sorry. You're gonna slowly sit down and then stand back up, trying to keep your hips level. Now, if you need something to support you or you, you, know, you need something to balance, I'm just gonna put these up against here because I feel like they're kind of not that stable. So, let's go, 10 reps per leg. Like I was saying, you can hold on to something if you need to. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Make sure your core is engaged here. Next, we're going to be doing 
single leg deadlifts. All right, this is a really great exercise for strengthening your core, your glutes, and your hamstrings, and building that core stability. So what you're gonna do is hold the weight in your right hand, and we're gonna be starting with the left leg. So you're gonna wanna keep your back flat and send your hips back, keeping it flat, like you're gonna put the weight down, and you are, you're gonna put it down on the ground, and then keeping your back flat, and your knee should be not bent, but not locked out, so slight bend in your knee. You can have your arm out for support, and then you're just going to pick it back up. Now, uh, if your mobility is a, it's kind of a struggle to get it all the way down to the ground, I would suggest getting a step or a low box that you can place the weight on, um, I used to have to do that because I really had a, a, like a not a good range of motion in my hamstrings, but now I can go all the way down to the ground and just keeping my back flat. So just if you go down and you're like, whoa, I can't go down any further without rounding my back, you're gonna feel, you know, you're gonna feel your back kind of collapse at one point if you don't have great mobility, then if that's as far as you can go, then get something that is this high that you can place the weight on, if that makes sense, okay? So we're going for 10 reps per side. Let's do it. And you really want to focus here. One. Two. Brace your core. Three. Four. Really concentrate on keeping your hips level. So don't let one of your hips hike up. Uh, it's helpful to look in the mirror. Five. One. Two, three, four, and five. All right, other side. on my right leg all the time with all my single leg exercises so that's totally normal to be you know less stable on one side two really squeeze the core three keep your back flat four make sure you're not looking up Make sure your spine's neutral, your neck is looking down at the ground when you're hinging down. Five. Five more. One. Two. Three, four, and last one, five. Good job. All right, next we're going to do kettlebell swings. So I'm going to use the same weight. We're just going to go for 20 reps. And you really just want to focus on keeping that back flat, keeping your spine neutral. So don't look up like this when you're doing the kettlebell swing. Look down, pushing your hips forward and squeezing with glutes. So again, we're really strengthening the posterior chain, which in a lot of people is quite weak. So we're all kind of like hunched forward and tight and overactive in the front of our body but weak in the back. So 
Kettlebell swing. We're gonna strengthen the glutes, strengthen the hips, and the back. Okay, 20 reps. Here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Nice. All right. Next up, we're going to be doing arch body hold. And this again is going to really strengthen the posterior chain. We're going to hold it for we're going to hold it for 30 seconds. So just hold it as long as you can. The goal is 30 seconds. Just put that there. Okay, so come onto your belly and keeping your spine neutral. The way we're going to do this is we're going to lift the arms and the legs at the same time. And you're going to try to keep your feet together and squeeze the entire back of your body. That's it. All right, so ready, set, go. Lift them up. Squeeze. We're halfway. Few more seconds. And relax. Oh. All right, guys. And next up, we're going to do slow rep goblet squats. So, I'm going to grab, I'm going to use my kettlebell again. And you can do this body weight, you don't need to use weight. We're just going to do goblet squats. Eight reps, nice and slow. So start by having your feet uh, just a little wider than hip width. Squeeze your glutes, tuck your pelvis under. Now, you're gonna send the hips back and squat down. All the way down, or as far as you can, keeping your chest up. So now, come back up. That's one. Hips back, bend the knees. Two. Brace the core. Push the knees out. Three. Really screw your feet into the ground. And feel like you're kind of like spreading the floor apart with your feet and at the same time pushing your knees out. I think that was four. Four more. One. Two, three, and last one, four, good. All right, friends, the last exercise is going to be single leg foot elevated glute bridge. So bring your butt relatively close to your chair. You want about a 90 degree angle here. Tuck your pelvis under and bring your legs together. Now lift one leg. Now you're going to use your glutes and your core to bring your hips up. You can put your arms down on the ground if you want. Here we go. And you want to extend as high as you can while keeping your spine neutral. Nice and slow. Eight reps. Two. Three, four, five, and the idea behind this is, you know, like we've gone ahead and done all that hip mobility, like the stretch, like the hip flexor stretches, so now that we've loosened that up, 
We now want to strengthen in that new uh, flexible range. So now you really want to like just go slow and controlled. All right, other side. So now that we've like loosened and stretched things out, we want to really strengthen the glutes in that range of motion, if that makes sense. All right, here we go. Lift up, lift the leg, and one. Keep your hips level. Don't make sure they're in, in line, not one's hiked up and one's down. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Really squeeze that glute. Good. Nice job, you guys. We're gonna do that series of exercises one more time. All right, guys, round two. I apologize if the light keeps changing in here. The sun keeps poking in and out of the clouds. So, yeah, it happens. Okay, exercise one is Cossack squats. And remember, you're gonna have your feet wide. Come down to one side. Externally rotate your thighs, both of them. Push the knee out and make sure your foot is flat on the ground. The one that's squatting, and the other one cannot, can the heel, you know, just the heel on the ground. Okay, here we go. 12 reps back and forth. One. Keep the chest up. Two. Try to sink a little lower every time. Three. Four. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. All right, good job. Clap shells. Now, I'm just gonna do it without the band, actually. Sometimes I like to do it without the band because I feel like you can just really even get a better mind-muscle connection when there's nothing kind of like, no band or weight or anything. You can just really concentrate and feel. So 90 degrees in your legs and your torso should be 90 degrees to your thighs. And now place your hand on your hips just to remind yourself to not open like this. Your hip should not move, okay? Only your knee. 20 reps per side, here we go. One, two, really focus on what you're doing here. Three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten, ten more, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, ten. Great. Let's do the other side. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 
One, two, make sure you're not rotating. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine,
Put the weight down, and then pick it back up. Woo! And like I said, it's okay if you wobble. Just re squeeze your core and get right back into it. That's two. Three, remember to keep your knees soft. Don't lock it out, but keep it mostly straight. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Two more. My glutes are burning. <laughs> Nine, make sure your back is flat, no rounding. 10, nice. All right, let's switch sides. Oh, my left leg is just so much more stable. I broke my right leg when I was two, my femur, and I've noticed that, yeah, my right leg is weaker and less stable. Oh, it feels so different on my left. Three. Four. Five. Five more. One. Two. Three. Four. Last one. And five. Good. Okay, guys, kettlebell swings are next. Twenty reps. So feet wider than hip, hip width, and you're gonna hinge at your hips and then explode up, <sighs> squeezing your glutes, pushing your hips forward. Four, five, don't crank your neck. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, arch body hold. So remember to keep your feet together. We're going for thirty seconds. Arms and legs extended. Get ready. Get ready to lift and hold. Ready, set, go. Make sure you're looking down and slightly ahead of you, not cranking your neck. Halfway there. And relax. Good job. Okay, guys. We're going to do our slow rep goblet squats. Grab your weight and feet a little bit wider than hip width apart. Squeeze your glutes. Now, Send your hips back, keeping your back flat. Bend your knees, push the knees out. Come all the way down and come back out. That's one. We're gonna go slow. 
and controlled. Now, screw your feet into the ground and imagine like you're spreading the floor apart, pushing your knees up, keeping that chest up. Engage your core. Squeeze your glutes. We've spent so much time now loosening everything, increasing the range of motion. Now we just want to like program that in to our uh, movement patterns. Four, four more. One. Push the knees out. Two. See, this is hard. Like my back is like, woo, from holding this. This is just 20 pounds. But when you really go slow and controlled, it's a lot harder. Three. Last one. Good. All right. Put that down. Okay, we have got just one exercise left. Single leg, foot elevated, glute bridges. So, make a 90 degree angle with your legs. Bring your feet together. Lift those hips up, now lift one leg. Now, 10 reps, or no, sorry, eight reps. Eight slow reps. Tuck the pelvis under and extend the hips. One, two, really squeeze at the top and really just try to push up at the top as high as you can while keeping a neutral spine and keeping your hips level. So your hip bones need to be level, not like, you know, rotated. I think we've got, yeah, five more. Let's go. One. Two. Three. Four. And five. Good. All right, let's do the other leg. Tuck the pelvis under. Squeeze the core. Bring the hips up. Lift the leg. Let's go. One. Two. Three, four, four more. It's so much harder when you go slow <laughs> and really focus on your form, isn't it? One, I could do like a hundred of these if I wasn't paying attention. Two, push through that heel, three, and four. Push it up, push it up. Good, relax. <sighs> All right, you guys, that was, that was it. Um, let me know what you thought of this routine in the comments below. Um, you know, we can do a quick little hamstring stretch because we did do quite a bit of hamstring stuff. So let's just do that real quick. So my, another favorite hamstring stretch of mine is like this. To extend the leg in front of you, and lean forward, keeping your back flat, and you're feeling nice stretching your hamstring. So I just wanna thank all of my patrons on Patreon for uh, you know, supporting me and giving me ideas for videos. I'm really enjoying this new thing where I'm just doing all of my videos for my patrons, basically. And uh, yeah, so if you're interested in joining my Patreon, the link is in the description. And yeah, so thank you guys, and especially you guys, John, Bonnie, and Story. I really hope you guys enjoy this routine, and I hope that it helps you with your goals and makes your body feel good. Don't hesitate to leave me some feedback in the comments below. And yeah, thank you guys so much for working out with me, working on 
my mobility and hip strength and glute and core strength together. Yeah, this felt really good. So just a couple more seconds here. Okay, nice. All right, you guys, let me know how you feel. Like, I feel so good right now. <laughs> it feels so good. Let me know how you feel in the comments below, and I will see you next week for the next workout. Bye.